What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another snack talk. Today, to snack on, I actually got these little stuffed Mexi bites that I talked about in my last snack talk. Look at that. So good. Today, I'm gonna be talking about conspiracies. I really like conspiracies, and I know a lot of other people do. Some people think they're stupid, so sorry if you don't wanna watch this video. This isn't gonna be like the funniest or most um, interesting video to some people, but it's something that I'm interested in, so that's why I'm making it. So grab a snack, come listen to some conspiracies. The first one that I wanna talk about is the Titanic conspiracy. Keep in mind, like, I haven't researched these thoroughly. I don't have hard, hard evidence. This isn't trying to like convince anyone that the conspiracy is true. It's more just like spreading awareness. Like maybe you didn't know about one of these conspiracies and you can look into it more if you're into conspiracies like I am. So this one, it says basically there were two ships, the Titanic, the Olympic. They were both made by the same company. The Olympic was made before the Titanic and it went on cruises and whatnot. And then it got into really bad shape. I don't know if it like hit something or if it was just getting old, you know? So the Olympic had, I don't know, I think, like I said, these aren't exact facts, but basically the Olympic, I'm gonna make up a number, but the idea will still stand, you'll see. So the Olympic had 14 portholes, we'll say. And the Titanic only had 12 or something but the number of portholes on the ships were different. The theory is the Titanic never actually sailed. It was the Olympic that took all the people and they, the company knew it was gonna sink. Here's a couple reasons why people think that's true. So the ship that took off with all those people that claimed to be the Titanic had 14 portholes or it had the number that the Olympic had of portholes. It didn't have the number that was on the Titanic it had the number that was on the Olympic. So that's red flag number one. And honestly, some of these might have been disproven as um, false facts, but this is just what I know. So the Titanic took off, and when they hit that iceberg, they were miles off course. Like, the ship was not on the course it was supposed to be on. So that's another red flag right there. Another thing is... Some people that had purchased tickets for the Titanic the day before they were supposed to get on the Titanic to go, they didn't board. They were like, oh, I'm feeling very sick. I am i can't go on this cruise. Which, if you're feeling sick and you just bought this super expensive ticket, you'd go. Like, you wouldn't pass up the opportunity or the money because you were feeling like not well. And one of the people who did that, they were seen the day that the Titanic was taking off, or it was like the day after the Titanic took off, walking around town, like completely fine, just having a day out. So obviously he was not sick. Um, and some people believe that the company, because these people were so rich, um, that had bought some of these tickets, they were like, listen, we're gonna crash this ship, like, don't get on the ship. Because if you like, maybe rich friends would do that to each other, or the company would want the rich people to not get on the ship. Another creepy thing about it is there was a ship that was around the Titanic at that time that they found that was only carrying blankets and food, I think. No passengers, just blankets and food right by the Titanic when it sunk, so, um, it's a little weird. Probably not a coincidence. Now, another thing about it is this diver was scuba diving and was looking at the remains of the Titanic, um, I don't know how many years ago, like, I don't know if it was recent or a couple years ago, but he found that the side of the ship that had Titanic written on it it had a big M, a big P, and a big I. Um, Titanic doesn't have those letters in it. 
I mean, yeah, the I and the C. But Titanic doesn't have an M in it. Olympic does. MPI, are you kidding me? That says Olympic. Like, obviously the paint that said Titanic wore off in the water and it revealed the true name of the ship, which was the Olympic. The reason uh, the theorists believe they would do this is because the Olympic was on its last legs. And what they wanted to do is, why would we spend a ton of money to repair this ship? And they were building the Titanic at this time, so they could have either had a pretty good Titanic ship and then used a bunch of money to repair the Olympics, so they would have two pretty good ships, or they could have one incredible ship and forget the other ship. So they could go, pretend the Olympic is the Titanic, and crash it and get a ton of insurance on it to use toward the actual Titanic ship. So they could have this huge, grand, big, amazing scale of the art ship. And the Titanic's insurance was increased five days before sailing. Also, the Titanic was not open for a uh, public or press inspection. But yeah, so that's that one. There's a bunch more on it, if you're curious at all. I know a bunch of other people have made videos about the Titanic conspiracy, so you can go check that out. If you want to dive deeper into the rabbit hole like I always do. So the next conspiracy I want to talk about is, like, trending right now. Um, the Mandela Effect, and here's the thing, I've been into conspiracies for like years and years and years, and I always am fascinated by them, and I always want to know more, and I love hearing new theories, and then I'll tell my friends about them, or people I know about them, and they're like, okay, you're insane, no, and then now, years later, it's conspiracies are like a trend, and some people are coming to me being like, oh, have you heard this conspiracy? And I'm like, bitch, that's the one I told you like four years ago and you called me insane. And it's not that I'm mad that people are hopping on this conspiracy bandwagon, it's that I'm mad that people are hopping on it and trying to tell me stuff like I don't know about conspiracies. It's fine though. So the Mandela Effect is named after M Nelson Mandela because everyone thought he had died and they're like, oh yeah, Nelson Mandela's dead. And then it turns out he wasn't. And everyone could have sworn he was dead. This, I think, because it's become such a big thing and it's uh, kind of like this popular thing right now, people are just trying to find new ones. And it's kind of like, you know what happened with the... Uh, Salem witch trials when all the girls uh, acted like they were having effects from witches. The main theory behind that one is they were all just kind of, oh well, she's doing it so I'm gonna do it too. It was like this hysteria of, I should do it, like everyone else is faking it so I'm gonna do it too. And sometimes you may not even know that's what you're doing and it just happens, but uh, I think that's kind of what's going on with the Mandela effect right now because everyone's finding all these new Mandela effects. And like Kit Kat not having a dash between the middle of the names, like Kit dash cat, it's just Kit Kat. Okay, like <laughs> that that's just one of those ones that's so easily like you probably just had this idea in your head and then it didn't turn out to be. The Monopoly guy having a monocle, he doesn't. I think people think he did just because when you think top hat and cane and suit like he wears, you think monocle. Mr. Peanut, the little peanut guy, has a bow tie and a cane and a monocle and a top hat. So I think people just kind of associate a monocle with the fancy clothing characters. And I think that's where the Monopoly guy wearing a monocle came from. The only one that really I'm like, whoa, is the Bernstein Bears, which I know it's hypocritical because I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, those aren't real, and then one that could very likely be what I'm describing uh, is the one I believe. But that one just freaks me out, because the Bernstein Bears are the books you learn to read on, you know? That's some of the first words you read, and how could you 
how could everyone mess it up so that it was Berenstain the whole time instead of Berenstain with an A instead of E. I don't know, it's like, I can distinctly remember when I first read the Berenstain Bears, I thought to myself, wow, that's kind of weird. It's the authors are the Berenstains, but they spell it differently for the book. That's a little weird. So the fact that it's not spelled differently blew my mind. I don't know. I don't know. It's just crazy. So yeah, again, really hypocritical of me to say, wow, those are ridiculous ones and they are not real. And then the Bernstein Bear ones, I'm like, the last one I'm going to do, it's not quite a conspiracy. It kind of can tie into another one, the hollow earth theory. You can look up the hollow earth theory if you want to know more about that. I know in one of the Jenna Julian podcasts that Jenna Marbles does, they talk about the hollow earth theory. So you can look at that. It's pretty interesting. But there's this island and in the middle of it, there's this huge, huge pit. And people are always like, okay, we're gonna freaking excavate it and see what's down there. You'd think with the technology we have today that we could excavate this pit. But every time people have tried, it just fills up with water. Like there's some crazy booby trap defense mechanism that it has that was built into it where water just floods in from four sides when you try to dig in it. And for the life of these people that are trying to excavate this pit, they can't figure out how to keep it from happening. They can't find the entrances of where the water's coming from on the edges of the island. And it's just this crazy advanced engineering of this pit that we can't even figure out today. So like, how did they make that thousands of years ago? Some people believe that this spot is like an entrance to the world that's in the earth, which is part of the hollow earth theory. So I guess that's how it's a conspiracy theory. And what else is interesting is they found this coconut packaging stuff that was used to uh, contain treasure way back when. They would use this coconut shaving stuff to pack it in to protect their jewels and other stuff. This was used like thousands of years ago and there's no coconuts where they could have gotten those shavings. Nowhere around the island. Um, nowhere in the surrounding land by the island, just nowhere near it. And they found some of this packaging inside the pit. It's, it's a little weird that even with today's technology, we can't get through it. So it makes you wonder what's at the bottom of this pit and how did they make this so advanced uh, so long ago? So that's where I guess uh, alien conspiracies come in and maybe there was some subspecies of humans that was way more intelligent than us or super advanced or something which actually is part of the hollow earth theory. The people that live in the earth are way more advanced than us, so maybe they made it and they just have crazy advanced technology that they made it with. Uh, but it's, it's weird, it's pretty interesting. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool. So that's all I'm gonna talk about in this video. I don't want it to be too long. Um, but if you wanna know more about any of these conspiracies, just look them up, like there's a ton of stuff on them. But thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Yeah. This movie wasn't like the funniest or most interesting video to some people, but it's something that I like, so that's why I made it. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. If you want me to keep making videos, like this video so I know. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to check out my other videos. The last video I made, um, my No Shave November quest, uh, it's me shaving, so it's pretty interesting. The link will be in the description. See you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.